is going on guys it is your boy sister here bringing us in a photoshop tutorial here today i had a request on my video on my top five videos saying that we should are, are we going to get some simplistic videos again uh you know i haven't done one in a very long time like four months i think the last one i did was really cool and basically what i mean by simplistic is i i use this word a lot on my channel Anyone who's ever been on my channel for like at least like six months probably knows that, but I love that word for some odd reason. It's basically just be saying like very, you know, non-clustered, you know, banner designs when I say that. Um, past two videos, by the way, I've been had on my channel for the 2016 have been insane, like insane, 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 insane support. I don't know what it is, my selfie, everything is just blowing up on this year. I'm not sure why, if it's just like a beginning of the month thing, I have no clue, but I want to say thank you guys so much for it. I really, really, really appreciate it. So, with that being said, I'm not sure I'm titling this video because I have to figure out another word I can put next to simplistic, but we have the example here. I think it looks pretty freaking nice. I do really, really like how this came out, and basically it's a very simple thing to do. If you're new to Photoshop or new to like just completely like the design you know, area, and you're trying to make a header or a background for something, this is a very cool design. If you're just looking to use like maybe one of your own pictures, or I just basically use a picture from Google. I typed in waterfall, uh, tropical waterfall. I found this really, really nice picture. We're gonna put a nice CC on it. We're gonna show you how to make a really, really nice CC, something like this. Looks very, very nice, high contrast. Um, very nice, uh, I, guess, I, I guess we'd say like, you know, pulling these two colors together. It's like a hot pink and a purple. Um, as well as like using exposure a little bit and just basically giving it like a nice cool little border, which also this little lip here that kind of like really sets off the whole entire like cool design feel. So with that being said, guys, do not forget to give a like, two likes on the video equals a secret download below. Basically for the secret downloads is they're probably gonna put the PSD of this uh, cool little tutorial here in the description down below when we hit 200 likes for a nice little giveaway and saying thank you. So cool, let's get started right now. And the first thing I'm going to need though is the tropical picture again. So I'm just gonna drag that in from Google again. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna to cut that off and we're gonna just take this picture control T it really quick and then we're gonna lower um, I'm just gonna shrink why is this like out of this box there we go we're gonna shrink this a little bit and we are gonna go ahead and just drag it back to the place that I really liked it at like right here just seeing the end of the waterfall or like here I don't know you know I don't know what did I have it before Ooh, I didn't have the waterfall showing all right all right I like that all right so Cool. First thing we're going to start off with is the CC. So depending on the picture, of course your CC, uh, your color correction, I shouldn't really say CC all the time, but CC is obviously short for color correction. Um, I'm going to be using brightness and contrast, really, curve and gradient map and just exposure. I'm going to leave it with those four. So you can find the CC adjustments inside the little half circle here, leaves them all here, or if you just go to image adjustments. But of course the faster way is just go in and hit this little half circle here. So I'm going to start off with brightness and contrast, click on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and just mess around the contrast and brightness right now, right here. I'm going to extend this. looks a little odd. And we're going to mess around the brightness and contrast. So, of course, I'm not going to tell you to bring your contrast or your brightness up. Excuse me. I want to say the reason why I'm using brightness and contrast, I'm lowering it to the negatives, is because I want to bring out the colors a little bit more. Although I'm going to kind of like negate what I just said in like a little bit when I use the, bright, uh, the, the gradient maps. But I just want to make everything look you know, just like aesthetically better before I put the, the brightness and, uh, excuse me, before I put the gradient map on, I'm like completely messing up my words, my bad. But we're going to lower the brightness a little bit and we're going to bring it to like negative 60 or so. And then we're going to up the contrast. And basically, like I said, I'm just going to like say it again without trying to mess up is I want to make the picture look better before I put the uh, gradient map on. So I'm going to say cr uh, contrast, high contrast, low brightness is a lot for me. I love the way it looks. So I'm going to put it to about 45. You can see that this looks really good you know the picture is awesome but with this it looks a lot better a lot more HD nice quality so that's what I like to do and for that I can now add the cool little gradient map so cool trick about this is when you click on gradient map you have this little thing up here you just want to click up uh, click on it I have this like a, a simple preset here for like what I want to do things so first thing you want to do is probably t uh, change your first um, gradient map little uh, color picker here to a dark purple you can use my hex code just for the example for now you can change it but I want to start off with this you start off with this that way you know where to go after this hex code for this is two zero two two three three and basically what I'm telling you that is a dark purple or a dark color whether it's like a you know it has to be like a dark purple or a dark blue or a dark like maybe red I uh, can't really be like green and yellow and uh, like, you know, things like that of those kind of like sorts, very vibrant colors, just because you want to have a dark color, because when you pick a second color and it's a very vibrant color, it looks really good. So I'm going to use that same pink. So I'm going to click somewhere over here. You can see that 
and it really applies that really nice cool looking CC to it and if I just bring this up here I want to get that nice little hot pink there we go that's the color right here so this is like the uh, the secondary color picker is where you want to put your color in the main color that you want so the reason why this is not black or any other type of color if I change this to black right now you can see it's very bland it's very boring looking it's not very you know it doesn't look good to me that is so if I put this to purple it just looks a lot a lot better like a nice dark purple like I said maybe even like you know you can switch to like a dark blue or maybe even don't want to put it up that much but you know just play around with it a lot it also bit it also really really depends on the color you want to choose as your secondary so you're gonna probably choose your secondary color first maybe and then go to like this whole dark purple stuff but it just depends on what you want to do I'm gonna stick with the uh, dark purple so I think it's like two two three three to something I forgot it but I'm just gonna leave it to somewhere around I think I just canceled that there we go there we go so I'm gonna leave it like around here and then that's where I want to just I want to have this color it looks really nice so sweet I do have this color now I'm going to go ahead and apply an exposure so the reason why I like to do this is because um I had a lot of fun with this when I first ever found out what it did. It kind of like flattens the image down for me and it kind of makes it like design ready for me. I don't want to have too much uh, depth in my designs. I don't know. That's just a thing that I don't like to have in. And basically what I'm going to do is like kind of like make everything look like there's like a screen above it. So that it all like kind of like goes in one or it makes it look like it's designed to be just one picture. Although it is one picture. I'm thinking differently than you probably. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm going to show you guys what I mean by that. You can see which one looks better and you can choose if you want to use exposure or not. So. But they all like the camera nerds at me right now. They're probably like, what are you talking about? I know what exposure is. So anyway, I'll mess around with exposure a little bit. And I'm going to say that that is okay. That looks okay. I kind of want to keep the clouds up here. That's what I'm looking right now. Something like that. Um, so you can see that basically what this did, also trying to kind of change the color. I don't want to change the color too much. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to like there. Okay, I like it. I like the little screen look to it. I'm going to lower the opacity of it maybe to like 60 or so just so I can get my exposure in. I kind of like it. I, I kind of like how the trees look with the exposure on. Choose what you want to do or not. But after the exposure, your gradient map and your brightness and contrast, you can apply as many uh, brightness and contrast as you want throughout the design. I'm probably going to add one more after I do a little bit, you know, you know, tweaking and stuff. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hit my brush uh, quick select so it's B on my keyboard. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to use the soft brush. Everyone has a soft brush default brush. And pretty much I'm going to want to change my primary color now to whatever it is to white. Um, just a nice little offset white maybe, something like around here. So this like triple F. Uh, uh, triple F4 hex code here. And I'm just gonna click over here in this little corner. I'm gonna click maybe like here, here. So like top left corner, bottom you know left, uh, top right a little bit, and then like bottom right. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. We'll go for that right now. And we're just not really like adding lighting lighting effects that like apply to the picture. It's just more making it look better. I like how this looks. And I do, yes, I do like how this looks. Sweet. So there we go. I kind of, I wanted to choose to put it in like darker spots like this area and these areas just because I feel like I wanted to make it look more flat. So that's what I'm going for right now. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty good so far. And also a cool little tip. If you're doing color corrections and stuff and you have something that changes the color, like the brightness and, uh, excuse me, like the uh, uh, gradient map we have here. If you clicked on the little thumbnail here of this little white box, if you click your eraser, which is also your E quick select, um, you can go ahead and figure out that if you're in like a nice soft brush here, if I just erase a little bit, oops, I'm not on my gradient map, clicked on it, there we go. If I erase a little bit here, you can get like a cool tone of color if you wish to, of course, that you can apply in a very like, you know, unique setting. I kind of put it on this one a little bit. You can see like it's very, you know, you know brown or the original colors or with obviously before the, uh, the gradient map is applied. And it looks pretty cool. I do like how that looks. I didn't apply it to anything else inside here. I felt like it wasn't flowing right. Um, but if you gave it time and you probably worked on it a little bit, I can probably would have had like really nice little uh, kind of like almost like a rainbow kind of thing going on. But I'm just going to apply it again here just because it looks really nice. And I, I, I do like how it looks. But what I mean by that is like I didn't think like having random splotches of green made sense. I tried like putting it down here. 
but it didn't really make sense too much. It kind of looked like very sloppy, but in that corner, it looked really dope. So if you had like rocks or maybe like browns or not really much as like green that sticks out so much, uh, that doesn't blend very well with like maybe a, any color in the world. Brown kind of, you know, goes together with like most colors, I would say. I'm just like probably speaking on my ass, but you know, it looks good with this pink. So that's why I'm just racing it, trying to figure some stuff out. Same thing with like hue and saturation. If you apply that, you can do the same thing with anything like here. Um, so yeah, that's just so you know, you can do some cool stuff with that. So right now we're going to go ahead and apply the cool little, little, uh, I guess you would call them what borders or like, you know, like these little thirds right here. I don't know how to like what I would call them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll make a new layer above this one right here. And we're going to go ahead and click somewhere up here and then up here as well. But on the second click over here with the pen tool I'm using, by the way, I'm clicking and dragging. That way I can uh, now select this little thing here, this little secondary extended point thing. Also, there's two of them, of course. We're going to get rid of that one a little bit. But on this extended point, we're basically going to, this is straight right now, right? So I have it straight. I'm holding select, by the way, to select this on the, uh, to select on the point. And if I just bring it down, it's going to give me a curve. That's what I'm really, really looking for right now. So with this curve, you can see I have it over here as well. Although the curve is completely opposite, um, maybe I'll do the opposite curve as well. Yeah, we'll just do the same exact opposite curve. So I'm just going to click somewhere right here then, and then click over here. And then besides going down, it's going to go up, just like so. And I'm just going to say like right about here is where I want it. Um, just also I have these rulers here that way I know where I can stop and where the middle is exactly so it's all perfect and stuff So with this little curve here I'm just basically applying like a cool little almost like a fisheye kind of thing is where I kind of had in my uh, my head So with this here if I click back on this point if I hold alt and click back on it Just like so the extended point goes away I can also hold shift now to make straight lines just to basically go through halfway This is the halfway mark ruler uh, all these rulers are uh, basically put on through my document I don't know if I said it already, but the document size is a Twitter header dimension basic uh, Twitter header dimension, which is 1500 by 500 200 resolution and to bring up these little rulers up here is control R and then basically I select on the little canvas over here, dragged it, and then basically if you see like visually where you think the middle is, if you like hover hover over it a little bit, you can get these little snaps. So I'm gonna say like right there is like a snap. It's snapping there, and that's where the middle is. And then if I snap going vertical, you can see that this is where the middle is right here. It's snapping. So that's what you can see where the middle is of any document ever. Um, but you know other things like you have to like measure like where the you know the picture is and stuff like that or like the profile pictures are That's something you have to do like trial and error or just like you know having the, the exact web codes You know dimensions and stuff in it, but that's just besides the point. I have my rulers here Holding shift still clicking over here I'm basically connecting it and I'm just gonna connect it with a simple or I'm gonna you know fill it in with a simple white drop down to use white and then with this here I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna drag it down, holding shift as well. That means with any orientation that I started dragging it, it will keep that same exact orientation lock and I can't go left and right. So that's what that means. Holding control T now, uh, pressing control T, excuse me, right clicking, flipping vertical. And this way here, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cool little, uh, little fisheye thing going on. So basically this is gonna set us off to actually do something like this. Um, whether or not though, <coughs> You can also, actually that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually click on control and we're gonna select this thumbnail here. Clicking on control actually selects the, uh, basically anything inside this layer, the shape and stuff. So I have this little shape that we just made and I basically also merge these two together. Uh, merge these two together by holding control and then control E. So anyway, holding control again, holding, uh, clicking on the thumbnail, it's gonna select this right here and we're gonna basically click M on our keyboard or just select the uh, rectangle marquee tool, right click on it and then select inverse. So this is now going to select the outsides right here, and this is what we want. We're going to make another new layer, make sure this is untouched, and we're going to press Alt Backspace or Quick Fill it with any color by right-clicking, Fill, drop down, Use White, something like that. There we go. And then I right-click, Deselect, or Control D, and then basically now we have this, and this is what I want as well. So if I just automatically put, the, I'm going to change this color though to black. So I'm just going to put this on color overlay, make it nice black. Then I'm gonna rasterize the layer. That way I can also change this blend mode from normal to saturation. So this is where it's gonna be cool. All right, I'm gonna wanna split these two together though. I'm gonna split these uh, two things apart, excuse me. So I'm just gonna hover over with the uh, rectangle marquee tool and I'm gonna split them to, uh, split them apart by using layer via cut while I'm selected on this layer. Now I have two separate layers. This one is the bottom one. I know I spelled bottom wrong. This was the top. 
And then basically I want to see if I, I kind of want to keep, I do like how that looks. I don't know if I like the, the spacing between this, but that's besides the point. Anyway, now we have this here. Just That's just a, also, uh, this is like a template for us to get this little uh, thing over here. But we're going to use this as well. So this is like the middle. All right, so we're getting to the end point here. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, this little bottom layer here. I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a inner shadow. And I'm going to change my angle from here. I'm going to uh, turn off global light and put it on 90. That way the, uh, the shadow is only pointing down. It's also picking up this color here, this black, and kind of like separating it. It's making it look really freaking sick right now. So this is like that really cool part that you saw in the uh, example. And I'm going to go ahead and make my distance like a little bit shorter, not too much. Like two is really good. The size is really good. And I really, really like how everything is here right now. So the settings for this I have is 75, 2, 0, and 10. Uh, for the inner shadow here, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to put a text in really quick. I believe I had the word simple. And this font choice I do have here is called uh, Bank Gothic. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Take my rulers, make sure it's in the middle. And there we go. We got the word simple going on here, looking really nice so far. All right, cool, sweet. So with this basically now, um, oh, wait, let's just make a nice little subtext, you know, hint, hint. Uh, don't forget to leave a like. Ah, ah. All right, but make that little nice little small subtext there. Why not? Uh, there we go. Sweet. So we got some little simple things here. All right. So for the middle one now, I'm going to click on the middle one. The bottom one is done. You can either choose to do whatever the heck you want. Of course, this is just like a, a very bland, you know, thing uh, to like start off with. If you, if, if you wish you want to continue with it, uh, you can put like cool little pattern overlays in it if you wish. Um, that would look pretty sick if you chose to do that or uh, maybe even a, a gradient overlay to make it darker if you wanted to like to make the uh, little gray boxes darker you can put it on like a soft shadow or overlay or soft light excuse me to make the boxes darker if you want to um, that looks pretty dope as well maybe I'll keep it on just for now just to show the example but also you can also tell that I freaking managed to not fix this all the way there we go but there we go, it looks pretty dope there. Now for the middle one I wanted to show you guys you can do is you can lower the fill, that way that gets rid of anything that's seen on the picture, but you can also still apply a layer style. So I double click on it, and I can go to inner shadow and do some little inner shadow stuff here. Change my angle to 190 degrees, or 180 degrees, excuse me. 180, and I mess around my distance and choke in size. And I can get this really cool little, uh, this little bleed in, it looks pretty dope. So I'm gonna lower the opacity down a little bit. Press okay. I'm going to rash rise this layer now, so the inner shadow is still there, but I'm going to take my eraser, I'm going to erase these sides off, and just like that, and I'm going to erase them over here, just to give it some cool little design, I'm going to erase something like there, uh, it looks pretty nice, and then basically to set everything off, I'm going to go ahead and make another uh, adjustment with the brightness and contrast, see if I like things a little bit darker, here we go. There we are, you know, there we go. And then also if I wanted to put another uh, nice little brush on the top, so on a new layer, taking my brush, making it a little bit bigger, nice little white uh, brush here, soft brush, and then just applying a nice little soft brush right on the top to set everything off and make it look super freaking dope. And there we go. I think that looks pretty freaking sick. Um, Yeah, that's basically it. So basically if you want to change any colors around, if you do want to use like human saturation, like I said before, like prior when I showed you how to do the little gradient map thing, if I just change the color a little bit to like, I don't know, this purple or whatever, if I click on this, this little thumbnail on this little white thumbnail here and I use my eraser, I can get this really cool different colors going on here. We got like nice, nice pink and purple going on now. If you want to do that, that is something you can do. So um, all in all, I really, 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 really enjoy this tutorial. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well. It's another simplistic, really cool, fun little quick design to do and like learn off of. And then of course you can make it your own by doing other crazy stuff if you wish to. Anyway guys, don't forget to leave a like, two likes on the view, equal to secret down below. Don't forget to go to my Selfie, selfie.com slash SOHQ for any pre made to pack as low as $5. All that crazy cool stuff. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, at SysBHQ if I didn't say that already. I want to hit 10K uh, followers this year. I'm pretty sure we're really close. I'm pretty sure we're going to get it no matter what. But don't forget to follow me if you guys haven't already. And thank you guys so freaking much. Do not forget to subscribe all that crazy stuff. And I'll talk to you guys later. So switch out. Peace.